Hey guys, welcome to episode two of Lockie's Lockdown. Um, hope everyone's going well. Hope you're entertaining each other and your loved ones um, and everyone's staying healthy. Today we've got a special guest. Um, I thought I'd, we're not allowed out of Australia and the borders, etc. but I thought, you know, um, through our recording, we'll, we'll dial in Nick White, a, a great Brumby teammate and someone who's, who's coming back to the Brumbies next season and he's really excited. So I thought I'd um, give the fans what they want, give the sponsors, our great sponsors, the members, what they want. And you guys can chat to Whitey um, overseas in the UK at the moment playing for Exeter. Well, I'll let him do the talking. Um, we'll just dial him in here. Um, we'll ask him some questions, see how he's going. Um, I'm sure you'll be excited to uh, watch this guy um, battle out with our other halfbacks next year at um, Geo Stadium. He's a little bit slow to things, Nick, um, but he should be here soon. Hey! <laughs> nice. What's going on, mate? Not much. Nice. Just two blokes trying to cover their lids. I like it. Yeah. No, I um, yeah, I'm, I've moved out to the country now, mate. So this doesn't come off. <laughs> oh, please. What's going on, mate? What's the time there? It is nine thirty in the morning, mate. You are far, far from a country boy, mate. We're we're talking about you at the moment, so. Let me do the, uh, let me do the talking, mate. What? Uh, how's your morning been? Run me through it, yeah. mate. Did Leo get you up? <clears throat> Leo got me up at six thirty. The time change, so that's usually five thirty, which is pretty on par for him. But yeah. I've gone to daylight savings, so um, yeah, that's turned to six thirty, which is bloody good. And uh, yeah, Mel gave me a sleep in. I woke some pancakes, some blueberry pancakes. Oh. What a lovely girl. Mate, you've Thank got you, life sorted. You've got life sorted over there. Very lucky. How's mate? While we're um, everyone's in ice over here, just the same as the the UK at the moment, mate. What's what um, what are you up to over there? And give us a bit of a rundown of your last few weeks in ISO. Um, so yeah, we're we're kind of probably about a, a week or so ahead of you guys. Um, with restrictions, uh, season got put on hold. It's been on hold for three weeks now. Um, got a couple more weeks before they um, they revisit it. It'll probably get pushed back a little bit further, I'd imagine. Um, you know, we're a little bit further along into the season um, than you guys, so I think they're looking to find ways to to finish it. But um, you know, with how serious this is, I think rugby's. I think in, fair to say, in everyone's mind, has taken a bit of a a backseat in their thinking. And um, yeah, we're we're in pretty strict. Isolation as a country over here, um, a bit like you guys now. You know, um, just stay at home, do the best you can, and um, you know, if you leave, we're allowed an hour of exercise a day, and uh, you know, to, to go to the shops and for for essentials, and that's it. Nice, mate. And you you're surviving okay with that? I know you you've got energy through the roof, mate. You've got ADD and a few issues of your own, mate, that I won't get, delve into too much. But how are you going with an hour outside a day? Uh, it's it's all right. We've got a we've got a wee little backyard here, so um, we you know, been using that. For the, uh, Last time when I visited you in the UK, mate, your place was called the castle, but we won't, you know, <laughs> talk about a little, yeah, yeah. little backyard. That's that's one way to describe it. You're a bit, uh, you're a bit using English slang, mate. Wee little backyard. Yeah, yeah. I've I've been uh, been been here maybe a bit too long. Yeah, um, you have, mate. But, uh, no, I'm doing all right. You know, my, my little fellow, he's going a bit stir crazy as well. So, um, you know, we, I don't know, we do our best. Yeah. Uh, we, we wear each other out. But, um, you know, I, I consider it a win when he falls asleep at 7.30 at night and I stay up to at least nine. So, yeah, I'll win that one. No, nice, bro. So, bro, a little bit about, um, I'm sure Brumby's members and sponsored supporters know who you are, but um, came through Maitland. Um, came down the Brums, you weren't really getting a shot, so you came down to Eastwood and I won a premiership and made you look pretty good. Um, and then the next year you were playing for the Wallabies. Um, <laughs> you went over, um, followed your good mate Jake White to Montpellier and 
your future coach, uh, Wisey, Scott Wiseman, until the Wallabies backs coach was there too. And then you, you found yourself in Exeter, um, played in a few grand finals so far, and you, you're coming back to join the Brumbies, mate, and, and play for your country again. Can you... I, I tried to sum it up quickly, but can you give me a little bit more, especially your sort of junior footy, mate, and, um, and, and also the stuff overseas to, for the people that haven't been following uh, where you've been the last four or five years since you left the Brums. Um, give them a little bit of insight, mate, before you, you get back to Canberra. Uh, mate, very, very well researched. Um... I started. I typed, started I typed your name into Wikipedia, but nothing came up, mate. So it was a pretty hard, was tough, was tough job. <laughs> oh, mate, anyone can write anything in there. I'm glad you're not re reading that. Um, yeah. I, so I grew up in Scone, um, an actual country boy, unlike the pretend yeah. version you're trying to be. Um, played played soccer growing up, and then um, started playing rugby just because my mates were playing. Um, Bit of a funny story. I remember going home telling my dad I want to play footy. He goes, because he's a bit of a leaguey. And uh, he goes, oh, beautiful. We're going to sign you up for the Scone Thoroughbreds. And I was like, Scone Thoroughbreds? No, no, no. I want to play for the Musclebrook Healers. I go, as I remember, he looks back and goes, mate, that's rugby. I was like, yeah, I'm going to play rugby with my mates. And, uh, yeah, as, as the story goes, he didn't talk to me for three days. But, you know, he's... He's gotten over that now and he's well into his rugby. But, yeah, so started playing at, at the age of 12 and then we moved to Maitland. Um, and then I went to boarding school at St Greg's where I was very lucky. Um, our boarding supervisor, um, like boarding principal, he, he knew Owen Finnegan down at the Brumbies um, and said to Owen, should come up and have a look at this, um, this bloke. And he come up and watched the game. We're playing against Hill Sports High. I was playing against Will Skelton. Will was like 15 and the size he is now, and yeah. I was I was 17 and probably the size the size but, you are now probably. Nah, I'm big now. Uh, um, <laughs> I was yeah, I wasn't very big, but um, Owen came up to me after the game and said, um, you know, if I if I wanted to come down and join the academy, uh, there was a spot there for me, which you know I jumped at, and uh, you know the rest was history. I, st I stayed at Brumbies, you know. The, as the saying goes, you stick around, uh, you know, stick around a barber long enough, you get a haircut. Um, you know, I held on to pads and did whatever I had to do for a few years, and just just kept on showing showing my face. And then, when times got tough, 2011 and 12 there, and they had no one else to turn to. Yeah, I was there waiting, waiting in the wings. And you never looked back, mate. No, and uh, yeah, so you know, you kind of hey, Leah, come say hello. Oh. Hey mate, how are ya? And uh, you could say hi. Hi. Hey Leo. Keep playing with your toys. Hey, I'm back on beer. Right. Um. Yeah. So next few years at Brumbies were were really good. I thought you know we were, we were successful without um without winning anything. And um, you know, 2015 came and you know it was a a, a difficult decision to make at the time, but you know, I, I felt like I was on the on the out with the national stuff, um, with uh, Czech coming in. So I made, you know, made the decision to to follow Benny Mullen across to Montpellier, and you know that that move wasn't overly successful for me. Um, you know, we, we, we were good as a club. Um, you know, we we won the Challenge Cup while I was there, and made the semis two years two years in a row, the top fourteen. But you know, I wasn't enjoying it. Um, the the rugby is pretty slow in France. Uh, which really isn't my style. So um, was was thinking about coming home, and then Exeter came to the fold. And um, you know, a lot of a lot of probably fans back home don't know a lot about Exeter, but um, you know, they they came up from the Championship into the Premiership about ten years ago. Um, you know, a real feel good story, and, and haven't turned back. And you know, they've just gone from strength to strength, and they've been in the last five finals. Um, you know, and and I kind of joined Exeter after they won it. Um, and then we've made the last two finals and, and lost the Saracens in both, which is which is tough. But hopefully if the season gets on pack, uh, back on track this year, um, go on better this year. And, you know, we're, we're in a really good place in Europe as well, which is, um, you know, the really big competition here. 
Um, so, you know, we're, we're undefeated um, through the rounds with, with Leinster. So, um, you know, it's seed second. And, yeah, I've, I've enjoyed my time here. But uh, when, when they dangled that World Cup carrot in front of me to, to come home, well, um, you know, I jumped at it because, you know, at the end of the day, that's what everyone, every kid grows up dreaming dreaming to do. And then, you know, in terms of finding a club back home, there was really no decision there. It was with, you know, if the Brumbies would have me, I'd, I'd, I'd love to go back there and jump at it. And yeah, uh, that all worked out pretty well. So looking forward to, to coming back and, you know, joining a, another good team. So I'm very lucky. You know, like, you, like you'll tell everybody, very, very lucky in terms of, you know, I've, 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 yeah, I've joined teams that are, that are very good and just, just jumped on the back, you know, Eastwood in 2011, jumped on the back of your, Try your back and yep. piggyback me through there. Yeah. No, mate, it's been a, a good journey for you and the family. Um, you're playing some really good footy. Um, you mentioned the World Cup, mate, which I was lucky to come and watch a few games in Japan. Um, while we're on playing for your country, mate, what... Uh, you know, overseas, the UK and France offers um, some some bonuses in terms of salaries and um, being able to live overseas whilst working, which a lot of jobs don't offer. Um, coming home, you've got number two on the way, um, which we're all excited about. But what are some other goals coming back, mate, in terms of um, in terms of footy? Yeah, I think. You know, like I, was, like I touched on before, I'm very, very lucky and, you know, come back to the, you guys at the Brums are doing so well and, you know, trophies is a big one for me. Um, yeah, we want to win trophies. Yeah. yeah I like, I'd, I'd love to win that, you know, win Super Rugby. I'd love to to go on and play a few more games for Australia. I'd, I'd love to be a part of, you know, a, you know, a bit of a change back home with, with the Wallabies. Um, you know, win some trophies there as well. The blood is low. It would be great to, to be a part of the group that, that, that won that back, um, which I think there's some amazing young talent back home. So, um, you know, if I, could, if I could play some part in that, whatever role that is, I'd, you know, that, that, that excites me. Um, you know, I'd, I think it was always the, the goal when I left in 2015 was to, to, to come over for a few years, um, play some good rugby, get get the experience of playing over here and then, um, you know, to, to come back, come back home. So it's worked out well and, you know, I want to come back, hit the ground running and do what I can. No, mate. Spot on. I think that's the most we've probably ever talked about rugby together. So let's move on to some um, more interesting things, mate. So I've never, you know, you've, you've always been a pretty boring bloke um, outside of rugby. When you lived in Sydney, and played with each kid. You're over at my place every afternoon, wanting to hang out and ask me what we what to do. And um, <laughs> you know, you're the only bloke to ever come down from Maitland or Canberra to Sydney and actually not enjoy himself. But mate, hobbies and, and interests outside of rugby, mate. You can't play golf. You can't surf. So don't try and throw some stories there. Um, apart from being a bad <laughs> mate outside of rugby, what do you get? What do you get up to in your spare time? Um, mate, not much. Uh, you've yeah, kind of hit the nail yeah. on the head there. I'm just yeah. a, a boring bloke. Good on you. And you've, um, got, you've got number two on the way in the matter of two years. So you're obviously doing something well. But, um, in, mate, Devon, south of England, mate, it's a beautiful part of the world. What do you, you know? Yeah. Get around to the cafes. You know, give me, give me something, mate. Um, what have you been no, up to the last few years? Um, we have done a lot of travelling, um, you know, in, in my, gee whiz, it's going to be five years over here. Seen a lot of, a lot of Europe. Um, so, you know, I'm very happy with that. Once we leave, one won't have, won't have to come back over to, to, to a holiday. We'll, we'll probably just come back over to, to Devon here. We, we love it here. Yeah. It, it's a nice part of the world. You've been down here. It's pretty good. Yeah. Um, in terms of what I get up to on my, you know, on my days on my spare time, to, to be honest, not not a much, not much. Um, yeah, I help out Mel where I can with Leo, um, get out and be active. But um, you know, I don't really have a hobby. My my hobby is kind of rugby. I uh, 
you know, Mel would say I probably, you know, when I'm not training or playing, I'm, I'm watching some sort of footage or, or training. Um, you know, I'm a bit of a, a rugby nose, yep. which, you know, it, that's some, some people that's their cup of tea and some people it's not. Like, I just really enjoy it. I, I love, I, I live, breathe, eat rugby and, um, you know, so... You know, I'm a bit of a student of the game where I, where I think I can pick up something here and there, watching a bit of footy, well, then you know, I'll do it. So yeah. It's good, yeah. mate. You'll be, you'll, be good, you'll be a good um, assistant coach or a good analysis for me in about five to ten years, mate. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> oh, mate, I'll be a good consultant from Maitland, yeah. <laughs> um, I'll be able to do <laughs> some video calls if you want. <laughs> Mate, then I know you've got an apartment already in Canberra, so at least you'll have somewhere to stay. Yeah. Mate, well, no, look, I, 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 what was that? I said, I don't know, Matt. I honestly don't know what I'm going to do after rugby. Some people say, you know, life's all about balance and, you know, they have a plan after rugby. Mate, rugby is my life. Buddy. When, when it all comes to, to an end, it'll be, it'll be a scary time. Yeah. But, but um, I don't know, I'll probably just keep playing 50 anyway. Yeah. Once this virus goes, mate, you've got a few more good years left in you, mate. With the you're talking, you're chatting about travel before. What, um, where's your favourite spot you've gone to, mate? Round there with um with the family. Oh, that's tough one, Mel. Mel's more cultured than you. Mel probably likes Rome and some, you know, Berlin or something. Where you know you're probably more, like a, more you're probably more like Portugal. Yeah, what. Is that yeah, so like, like for example, she took me to um, she took me to Venice. Yeah, which don't get me wrong, it's a lovely place, but it's got all, all the, as you say, culture and everything. So I just I took Leo to a, to a bloody pizza pasta joint. We sat down and watched the rugby. I was That's like, you know, what? this over here. Some good good pizza um, pasta in Venice. No, very good. Uh, Positano. Oh, good spot. Good seafood. Yeah. The Amalfi Coast. That yeah. was that was incredible. Yeah. You would have stayed. Where do you stay there? Oh, I don't know. The Ritz or something like that. I can't remember. Yeah. I was in an Airbnb up on the hill. You were down in the Ritz. <laughs> mate, so were we. We were in Airbnb up on hey, the don't hill. don't lie, mate. That's I the way do remember. It. I don't forget anything. And, mate, can you tell Mel just to... Um, <laughs> Put her hands over her ears. Where's the best? Where's the best lads trip you've gone to in Europe, mate? With the Exeter boys. Oh, mate, so I beat my hands there. No, Eastern Europe. Have you have you ventured out nah. those ways or just Ibiza? No, nah, we. Uh, they um, coming. Uh, we've done it. We've done a couple of trips. Us, you know, just a, a handful of us boys at the um, at the end of trips, and we've just there's flights. Um, Exeter is not a huge airport, so you're pretty limited on on direct flights, and there's a direct flight to Ibiza. So the last two seasons, we've we've you know like in the in our time off after after the finals, just gone and done a bit of a debrief boys session at Ibiza. Nice, which is good. Well, mate, Thirty degrees, good club. When you get back, when we have a few days, we can go out to you know boys trip to Yas, or we can go out to Orange and and have a lockdown at one of the pubs. It's the same thing, mate. Don't worry. I get down to Krakenbach. Yeah, we get get down there. I'll show you do a bit of horse riding. I'll bring my hat and we'll um mate, I'd be surprised if you know the frame from the back end of a horse. <laughs> mate, mate, you've got a lot to learn. You've been away for a long time, mate. The only the only thing you've got on me horse riding is you could probably get on top. Yeah. Get on top of the horse. I will need some sort of assistance. Your pony. You and you and Leo can ride the same pony, mate. Um, you were chatting about rugby before, and your um, your love for it. What a, you know for some of the kids out there, etc. I talked to Slippy last week, and he talked about um, growing up and never wanting a pregame ritual to, you know, throw him off his game, etc. But um, mate, you have played everywhere. What what are your pregame rituals or super superstitions or of the like? Can you hear that? <laughs> yeah, like that's that's normal for my house, don't worry. <laughs> you think there's something wrong, but he just can't get Batman out of his Batmobile. Yeah, no, it's normal, mate. <laughs> um but I've 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 never really had um any superstitions or pregame rituals. 
Um, I just haven't been that way inclined. Um, you know, I, I still still remember playing at Eastwood. And I was coming down from Maitland on game day and I can't remember what happened. I was in a car trouble or something, but we were running late. It was grand final, like the grand final morning. <laughs> no, it wasn't when grand the, final. When the bird, when the bird it was, flew in, it was... was... No, genuinely, it was semi-final, though. It was when we played round. I think it was one of the finals. I still remember. Yeah, and, um, and yeah, you know, I, I used to always like to to get down there quite quite early. I like to get the games early because I don't like to feel rushed. Um, yeah. And, you know, I jumped in the car and I'm like, Dad, I'm not going to be able to get food once we get there. So you usually just go to the canteen there and get a, I don't know. Well, nutrition wasn't high on my uh, priorities. A yeah. at, at bag of red frogs and a meat um, Yeah. And uh, anyway, on the way down, it, it was a bit of a rush and <laughs> I got like 10 nuggets and some chips and, and a Coke on the way down and then you know, pulled up just as, you know, we're all about to go into warm-up. And, mate, I scored three tries in the first 20 minutes. And, you know, it was probably the best game I've ever played in my life. So, you know, with the worst preparation you could possibly get, um, you know, I, you know I, I, it was kind of... That, that kind of showed me that, it, you know, as long as my head was right and, um, you know, pretty mentally strong, I, I, I didn't need that, that other stuff. So, you know, I, I do have a bit of a routine just because I know what what I like but you know it's it's pretty flexible yeah. um, you know uh, you got to be pretty flexible too once you have a little a little fella so true mate yeah. and mate I remember that game of semi-final at home at Eastwood versus Randwick and I threw that last pass to you for all three of your <laughs> tries so it was good you missed <laughs> that out but for all the for all the supporters out there mate make sure you add little details like that in it's very important <laughs> and also important for <laughs> young, kid, young kids out there that's got that have rituals and get a bit stressed before games to know that um, two great Wallabies don't take themselves too seriously before kickoff. Mate, what, um, something, you know, something that no one knows about you, you know, and it can't be that you, you technically classified a midget on your height and you've got horrible bowed <laughs> legs. Um, yep. they're, they're two things that probably, uh, you know, not, not many people would know unless they looked at you closely. Um, and you're receding, yeah. you're receding quite badly too, and that's why you're wearing your cap. Um, but yeah, mate, what, you know, me what, Leo can tell us. Yeah, Leo's a bit of grief. Leo, what? Tell them, tell me something about Dad, mate. Tell me about me. Tell me about me that no one knows. Yeah. Leo, does Dad know? I'm a pretty open book now. Anything people don't know about me. You should have stacked the dishwasher. <laughs> what was that? Did you hear that? No. She said, I'm not very good at stacking a dishwasher. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't. I don't Poor I'm, Mel. I'm, I'm, I'm not very good around the house. Um, Do you put the knives and forks down or up? Down. And what does Mel like? Does Mel like down or up? Uh, I think she goes down as well. Okay. But I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't, don't stack the dishwasher. <laughs> Equality. I'm kidding. I'm kidding for those out there. I do. Yeah. Um, no, honestly, it's, I'm pretty open book. Um, you know, I. I don't know what people don't know about me. They probably know everything. I'd, I'm sure they'll know. I enjoy it enough anyway. I, once this, once I enjoy running. Goes out. You enjoy running. Yeah. I enjoy running. Yeah, like um, I. Me too. I grew up. When I was, <laughs> when I um, before before I was kind of before I played rugby, and even once I did start playing rugby, I um, I did long distance running, which kind of ended up helped me out being a nine. Um, but that's what I was, you know, that was probably my main sport growing up. Um, you know, uh, one one state one year, um, and you know, it's just something I enjoy. You know, like times like now, like I went for a nice eleven k run the other day, and. You know, like that, I know like a lot, a lot of rugby guys, that'll, that'll break them, but it's just something I enjoy and I do quite regularly. Maybe on a day off, on a, on a Sunday after a game, I'll, I'll go for a nice long run. It helps me clear my head. Um, you know, it runs out the soreness and, you know, just, just you know, getting the endorphins working helps, her, well, helps me um, feel better. So, right. there you go. Something a lot of people. So for anyone in Canberra, when you get back, 
look out for Nick on a Sunday running round. If you if you live outside of Kingston and Campbell and Reed area, you probably won't see him. Um, that's where I think he's looking. But anyone in those areas, keep a keep a good eye out for him. Now, Nick, I know you're you're very you're a really close family man. I know you you've got a beautiful family. Um, I caught up with your parents and shared a beer with them when we were watching you play in Japan in the World Cup. But idols, mate, you know, I'm sure your dad's an idol. He's a fantastic human being. But apart from, apart from family, rugby or outside of rugby, um, do you have one or two idols you, you've you um, always looked up to? Um, Sporting-wise, uh, with rope, once I started um, playing rugby, uh, Bernie Larkham, Stephen Larkham, he was he was probably one just because I, I played 10 till I was about he's not, 16, 17. He's not coaching anymore, just so you know, mate, back here. He's, he's left. Yeah, I know. He's, yeah, he's at Munster, mate, I know. Oh, yeah, just go on. Uh, sorry. <laughs> so, so, yeah, to, to then, uh, you know, to, to be coached by Bernie was pretty cool. Um, you know, he, he was one. Um, yeah, obviously, I think my dad definitely. Um, you know, I still remember growing up, you know, uh, absolutely, you know, I still do, but idolised everything he did. And, um, you know, I've, I've got four sisters, two older, two younger, so um, a pretty strong bond with my old boy. And, um, you know, he taught me kind of all the ins and outs of, of footy and I'm uh, very appreciative of that. Um, so, you know, he's, yeah, he's always been someone I've... Uh, you know, kind of throughout my career and still do after games, he'll be someone I lean on, you know, if there's things to be worked on, what he's seen and what he hasn't seen. So he's kind of like a, um, you know, a one-on-one coach, which is good. And he doesn't hold back, which is even better. I did uh, I did make up a rule when I was growing up. I think I was, <laughs> he loves to bring this story out in front of people. Yeah. But I think I was like 15 or 16 and I'd, I'd just played and I didn't play very well. You know, I jumped in the car we're driving home and it was always a fair drive home and uh and he started talking about things i needed to do better and i was like oi just give me one day one day 24 hours where i can just sit back and i can have some me time appreciation time and then you can give me can you know constructive criticism and uh yeah you know, always uh, he, no, that didn't last very long. Um, yeah, but he, he always would start with like, "Are you ready to hear it?" I'm like, "Yes, I'm ready to hear it." He's, and mate, he still he still does that to this day. He'll uh, he'll send me a text message after a game. Congratulations! But are you ready for this? And uh, and, and yeah, make sure I'm I'm on top of my game. So yeah, very lucky. You are, mate. And mate, what? Um... I should know this, but I don't think you've ever done a uni degree or a, or a diploma or anything mate what outside of footy um hopefully this virus doesn't last but you know what what are you you know there's a bit of coaching maybe possibly or staying in rugby in some way consultancy mate you know do what do what some guys do and just do a week week a month to pay the bills um but <laughs> let's say not included in rugby rugby's not an option um what what would you be doing mate um, I don't think I don't think rugby will be an option for me. I think you know I've 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 travelled the world. Um, you know I've, I've dragged Mel and, and you know a, a little family. By the, by the time I'm finished, I'll have dragged them around everywhere. So um, you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna continue to and look good on the blokes who do do it. Ch- you know run around the world chasing those coaching gigs. But you know for me, I think you know once once rugby's finished, I'll be looking to lock down somewhere. Uh, what what job will that be? in? I wouldn't have a clue. Um, I did I did six months of um, at UC doing a teaching degree, and that's probably something that you know when I get back, I think I'll probably just just pick up again. Um, just try to as much as I can online, um, so that at the end of my career, I've, I haven't got a whole lot to do to, to finish that. And then you know that's you know that, that then I'll hopefully have a degree by that stage, and you know. I, I think I've I'd be okay at teaching. I don't know if I'll be a great teacher, but my two older sisters are teachers, and I can lean on them to well, help me out. It's it's good you just talked about teaching because you've 
you've put me through to the next segment. So, you know, I like, you know, at school, um, I always enjoyed maths. Um, and I know a lot of kids around Canberra at the moment can't go to school. So they're all doing their schooling online, etc. So I've, I've chatted to some of the boys about asking just a few, just easy math questions, just to see how you go. Is that, is that okay, mate? You can get Leo to help, but you can't, yeah. you can't get Mel to help. Because I know Mel's <laughs> the smarter one in the relationship. Oh, mate, maths, yeah, go on. You good? Okay, so we'll start. So, no, mate, put, put that calculator away, we'll ask. So what's, what's eight squared? Eight squared. Mate, don't worry, but Nick, I can see. Pardon? It's 64. 64, yeah. I don't know. Tell Mel to go to the next room. 64, that's one yeah, from yeah, one. Yeah, she's, not, she's not helping me. Sorry, what was that? No, so you're one from one. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to gradually get a little bit harder, okay? You're cutting out. I can't hear you. Mate, come on. Stop, stop playing games. <laughs> What's 2x times 4x squared? That's, that's algebra stuff. Yeah, that's, that's included in maths, Nick. Do you want me to go back um, a bit? I jump too far forward or just one more? Okay, what's... what's Six uh, step. <laughs> what? what? X equals what? <laughs> what? Last one, last one. <laughs> what, what's, um, what's the cube root? Of 27. Come on, this one's not very hard, Nick. Cube root of 27. I'm making these up on the spot. I did, I did, I was helping my 11 year old brother the other night with his homework and he was doing these. I thought a cube root was just a meme. <laughs> mate, this is, mate, if, any, if you go for a job at a school to teach maths, they might have watched his podcast. <laughs> Yeah, right. We won't, we won't let this go through then. No, I, mate, you'll be a good teacher. Don't stress. And, mate, while we're in isolation, you know, I don't think it'll go for hopefully too much longer. You've got to stay safe and look after everyone. But, mate, there's a few things behind me, and I want to know. I'll give you – I'll let you pick two things, okay? And for the next week, say there's a jersey – Brumby's jersey, where I'll go this way, sorry, mate. Brumby's jersey, an SG Fleet water bottle, you know, keeps the water clean. No viruses coming yep. from there. You've got the Land Rover rugby ball. I know you're looking to get a Land Rover when you come here. I'm sure you will. You've got, <laughs> um, you've got what's up here, a little bit of BSC protein, which is good for you keeping your weight on with those bruns. You've got a, some fruit here, fresh fruit, one of my favourites from Ziggy's in Canberra. And... And Gage Rose Brewing, mate. Beautiful, beautiful little beer, mate. Really, really fruity. What you get to pick? Two, you get to pick two things. And I've signed the jersey, so it's it's you know it goes up in value. You could sell it maybe, and then resell. Who knows? But what what are the two things you would pick out of them, mate? Did you say you've signed the jersey? Yeah. Then yeah, just the main, just the best players in the team signed it. Um, yeah, well, I don't want that jersey then. Yeah. Um, what do I get? Do I get these items? Oh, I'm, you might. I'm, I might send them over to Exeter. What? What? Um, what two items would you pick? Mate, so I, I'm, I absolutely love the name dropping of, of all the sponsors, mate. That's outstanding. Then talk about uh, name dropping. Zambas. <laughs> yes, Big Al. What's going on? Mate, you can't. You can't call him Al anymore. He wants. He likes everyone calling him Skip. Or captain. Man, sorry, it's sorry, it's sorry, it's Skip. Man, your, your ears were burning once you started talking about Land Rover, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> mate, mate no, he, no, no. he was out the back vacuuming at the Sabo. He's got to change it over tomorrow from the... What are the, what are the names, Al? What are the names of the Land Rover discoveries? Yeah, yeah. Mate. Oh, he's, oh, the disco, he, disco. he's got the disco. Sorry, mate. Oh, he's, he's got the discovery. He's probably upgrading for that Range Rover Sport or something. Yeah, he's made. He's oh, always. He's, but he looks. He looks very flashing, it, mate. I tell you what, isolation must be hard. I'll usually pay someone to clean it for you, don't you, big dog? Oh, mate, it's exactly what he was talking about. He said he went to. He drove around the whole of Canberra. Not one car place open. He had to do it himself. He tried to change a ten dollar note for some coins and an eighties note. 
He said he won't be able to have dinner. <laughs> he's salary sacrificing at the moment. So he did a bit of, vacuum, bit of vacuuming out the back, mate. He came in sweaty. His back was sore. He said, this is what I'm in now, mate. mate. Oh, <laughs> But he said, he said next time for all the people run car washes in Canberra, he said he'd easily pay a hundred bucks, never have to do that again. So, <laughs> uh, uh, hey, back, to, back to the two uh, items, yeah. What what are you going with for ISO? Um, Matt, I'll go with the uh, the whey protein, please. Yep, that's one. Got to um, got to bulk up, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um and. Got to stay hydrated, don't you? Yeah, SG Fleet water bottle. Yeah, yeah, SG Fleet water bottle and the uh, and the and the and the protein. Oh, I like what you've done there, mate. Very, very, healthy. Is it? Yeah. very healthy, mate. Very healthy, mate. Thanks for chatting. I don't want to keep you for too long. I know, I know you're on daddy duties, mate, and um, Leo wants to play Batman. But thanks for joining us. Yeah. Really, really <laughs> to see you back. Oh, that is unreal. That's better than my Jeep. <laughs> Come on, mate. 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 <laughs> oh, that's unbelievable, that Batman. God, is that the real That's actually one? a That's just a matchbox version. It just looks oh. big in my head. Mate, that's unbelievable. It, it, Jeez, it's Alexis. actually not that big. Yeah. Just, I know, you, I know you're having num I know you have a number two, but is it all right? If, can you give me some hand-me-downs for Harper? <laughs> mate. <laughs> We're struggling oh, back oh. here. But mate, thanks for thanks for chatting. It's always good. Um, for all the supporters out there, members, sponsors at Brum, let's get to the Brumby socials and let me know who you want to chat to. Um, what questions you want to ask them? Um, it's an open book with guys like Whitey and Spitz last week. Stay safe. Look after your loved ones. We'll get through this as one big family. And um, thanks to all the Brumbies members, supporters, and sponsors. Nick White, you'll get to see him soon in Canberra and playing for Australia in the gold jersey. And um, I can't wait to have you back, mate. Yeah, mate. No, thank you. And, and, and thanks to everyone. And, you know, I look forward to, to getting back. Um, you know, hopefully, you know, once this is all over and, uh, yeah, stay safe. And, yeah, lucky, I can't wait to, um, to be living in a tent out the back of your McMansion. <laughs> yeah, mate. Easy, mate. Yeah. Give Mel and Leo a kiss and I'll chat soon. I will do. All right. Bye.